Hello, everybody. Welcome back. I get asked all the time why we should start new worshiping communities when so many good people are leaving church altogether and when so many existing churches are getting smaller and even closing. And I believe this is one of the questions that can best be answered the way Jesus responded to those curious about him who would become his first disciples. Come and see. Come and see new churches emerging for those who simply don't connect with the ones we have, no matter how amazing they may be. They are everywhere in homes, bars, trailer parks, city parks, skate parks, dog parks, running clubs, gyms, garages, creativities on the loose, lives are changing. At a Montreat Youth Conference a couple of years ago, I had arranged for four new worshiping community youth groups to gather with some Atlanta youth groups for an ice cream social and game night. The evening was electric. The youth were new to each other from different churches, different parts of town, and they were breaking clicks, playing goofy youth group games, meeting one another, having a great time. Near midnight, one young man from Shalom International broke away from the games. He was one of the older kids, a leader in the community, and he ran over and bear hugged me and twirled me around exclaiming, this is the best day I have had since coming to the United States. No, he said, as he put my feet back down on the ground, this is the best day of my life. A student at Oikos graduates Emory University with honors, has incredible job offers from all over the world. I will only consider the jobs in Atlanta, he declares. Why, I asked, because I wanna help lead the college group and make sure other students have the home that I found in Oikos. After a surprise flash mob at our Presbytery meeting led by over 50 very talented African-American members of Rice Community Church, an elderly white church lady who always has perfect hair and always wears a sensible skirt, heels, and pearls, she greets me at the door. She has tears of joy streaming down her perfectly powdered face, and she takes my hand, leans in, and says, this is exactly what my soul needs. She tries to elaborate further, but cannot speak. Friends, we couldn't stop this work of the Spirit if we want to. We are rural groups, small groups, large groups, immigrant groups, multicultural groups, engaged groups, prayerful groups, reading groups, dancing groups, sports groups, environmental groups, music groups, online groups. There are tens and thousands of us across the United States gathering each week in the Presbyterian Church alone, all called into being by the living God doing a new thing among us making it easy to tell compelling stories for gospel is everywhere. This is it. We are now at the conclusion. We are so thankful that you spent your precious time with us over these five modules. And we hope that this experience with us has been enlightening, challenging, inspiring, edifying. If you're still wondering if what you do matters, let me just share one final story as we close. Because sometimes I wonder, I'm going to be honest, sometimes I wonder as a new worshiping pastor, does what I do matter? And it's stories like this that remind me that, yeah, what we do absolutely matters. So there's this young man, I'm just going to call him B. When he first started to come to our community, he was anti-God, he didn't believe in God, an atheist, an engineer and scientist by his background, um, just really had a lot of animosity toward the church and Christians. And this is when we were first starting out as Four Points. And so we invited him and he came because of a friend and we just loved on him and we just invited him into the community with no uh, hoops to jump through. And we had this opportunity, what we call Discovery Points, where I just invited some folks who are interested in learning a little bit more about God, about our faith, to ask any questions that they may have. No question was off limits in a small intimate gathering. And we went through this journey for roughly about two months together. And at the end of the journey, this young man who was incredibly angry at God, if God even existed, was completely anti-church. At the end of this two month journey, came to me after the final class and said to me, I like to confess my faith in Jesus as my savior and Lord. And this person is now faithfully investing into our church. This person has been with our church from the very beginning through eight years. He serves behind the scenes in incredible ways, so much so that on Sundays, he's part of what we call the build team. Our church, we have to come set up and break down everything that we do every Sunday. 
even when he has to work on Sunday, because sometimes he has to go into the office by 10 o'clock, he will come by himself at 8 o'clock to set things up and then go to the office. That's the kind of involvement he has for our church and community because that's the kind of love that he has for our church and our community. Mm -hmm. And what I'm wondering is what we do doesn't matter. If I'm at those places where, man, this is really hard, should I even continue? I look at stories like this, stories about this person by the name of B and others within our community and inspires me and reminds me, yeah, what we do absolutely matters. So I want to encourage you all that what you are doing matters. The people that you're investing in, they matter. And your new worshiping communities, they matter. We're cheering you on. We're rooting you on. We're excited for what God is doing in your midst. We're excited to hear continual great stories of the movement of the Holy Spirit in and amongst your new worshiping communities. Let us know how we can support you. Let us know if there are things we can do to make your work just a little easier. Stay with the postures and the ways of being that resonated or stuck with you. And stay with or start the five practices when the time is right, but not too late. Let them challenge and make you uncomfortable. Let them animate and direct some of your next steps. They've risen to the top because of the shared witnesses of colleagues. And let us know your stories of God on the move. May you thrive.